Hey guys, so on Friday on Instagram, Bungie announced many new exotics coming in the December patch. Most of these exotics are simply year one exotics that are being brought up to year two with a couple of new ones thrown in there. Some of them have gotten adjustments, some of them are the same, and I'll try to point out everything that we know. So uh, let's see what they are. We'll start with the weapons. First up is the ever popular Mita multi-tool. This is a slightly high rate of fire scout rifle, which got pretty popular in the second half of year one for Crucible. You guys saw me use it in a video very recently, and it is pretty good. It was able to compete in a time where hand cannons were very dominant, but now, with the current meta and with the current meta getting some balance adjustments, I think Mida is going to do very well in the Crucible. I know a fair amount of people liked it for PvE, I personally did not think it was top tier for PvE in year 1, but it might fare a little bit better now with the reduction of major targets. No known adjustments have been made to the multi-tool. Dragon's Breath was a sort of favorite of mine, I'm not really sure why, I think it's just because I had fun using it to break stuff in the game. Dragon's Breath was basically not used at all in year 1 due to its very slow velocity and due to the fact that G-Horn was around and was better in every single way. It does not have a year 2 version of itself listed on the Bungie Armory, so I don't know what changes it may or may not get. However, if I were to buff it, I would give it some more velocity and I would maybe swap out tripod for tracking. If this thing does get tracking, I think it'll be a pretty solid weapon. If it doesn't get tracking, then maybe if the Tycho Knot becomes more consistent, at least Titans can use it. Clan C is definitely a favorite of mine, and I think was the best fusion rifle in all of year one. It could be a very stable fusion rifle, a very hard hitting one, but also one that's very good in PvP, able to instantly melt people thanks to its main bonus. Fusions are getting a decent PvE damage buff in December, so who knows, maybe we'll see a couple of these floating around. Might even see them in PvP as well with shotguns getting nerfed. I don't anticipate any changes coming to this weapon at all. Super Good Advice is a heavy machine gun that was mostly pretty bad. It was a very fun gun to use because of its main bonus, which returns most shots to the magazine if they miss. In PvP, this was hilarious because you could just hold down the trigger and shoot for 45 seconds straight. However, its stability was the thing that made the weapon kinda weak, not to mention that it didn't really do any more damage than other machine guns. I get that the bonus of returning shots to the magazine is supposed to be what made this thing exotic, but it wasn't powerful enough to warrant using. I don't know if it is getting any changes, but I would possibly return some shots that do hit to the magazine to make the weapon feel a little more exotic. No Land Beyond is... well, it's, it's No Land Beyond and it's coming back. This is mostly considered as a joke of a weapon, but should still be treated with respect in PvP, as it is a sniper rifle after all. In PvE, it is a complete non-factor, and I don't think it will ever be relevant in PvE. It got some buffs in 2.0 to make it a little bit easier to use, but I'm not sure what else they could do to the weapon to make it better without turning it into a weapon that is too strong for PvP. It basically just needs very slight tuning here and there to make sure that it doesn't go over that threshold of being too strong. Finally, Hard Light will also be returning, and Hard Light was mostly considered a joke in year one as well. Ricochet rounds do basically nothing in the grand scheme of things, so the only things this weapon has going for it are over-penetrating rounds and glass half full, which is okay. However, hard light projectiles are not affected by damage falloff, but I'm not sure if that means rounds that bounce or all rounds, which could give it an edge. In year 1, the weapon was incredibly bouncy and difficult to control, but it did get a stability buff as well in patch 2.0. I don't foresee the weapon becoming super popular, and we don't know if any other changes are coming, but there might be a little bit of hope for this weapon somewhere. Next up, let's cover the armor. We'll start with Titans and the Armamentarium. This was the best overall Titan exotic in the game for quite a while, probably all of year one. As in, if I could only have one exotic armor piece, it would have been this. Two grenades is just good, plain, and simple. According to the Bungie Armory, the bonus special and heavy ammo capacity has been switched to increased drops instead. However, I have a feeling that Ruin Wings may still end up edging out Arma in PvE, but Arma for PvP is fantastic, and I might end up using it over Immolation Fists. 
Peregrine Greaves boost your shoulder charge damage if you use it in the air. Granted, it was like triple damage, but still. These were a non-factor for the time that they existed in all aspects of the game. The Year 2 version in the Armory says that they do the exact same thing, and so I don't anticipate them being useful at all, although you might see them in a top 5 video somewhere as they kill a Sunbreaker Titan or something. Twilight Garrison is a new Taken King exotic that lets you dodge in the air, sort of like Shade Step, but in the air. I know a couple of other YouTubers have gotten to use this because there are a couple of people in the game right now who do have the chest, thanks to an issue with Engram decoding earlier in the expansion, but I personally have not used it. It certainly sounds like it has PvP potential for escaping or getting into position. Unfortunately, it's tough to make use of in-air combat because weapons are so inaccurate in the air, with the exception of hand cannons and the Icarus bonus. Its PvE potential is probably not as much. We'll see. Warlocks, you guys only have a couple of exotics. The Nothing Manacles make their return from the House of Wolves. These were excellent gloves in both PvE and PvP for Voidwalkers, and I think with their return, you will definitely see more Voidwalkers. The main bonus has not changed from Year 1. You get two Scatter Grenades, and they track. This is very high burst damage in PvE, works very well, and in PvP is basically the same. Very unexpected levels of damage. I'm excited to see them back. Then on the other hand, we have the Apotheosis Veil, a helm. In year one, I thought this helm was very weak and overrated. It just restored your health whenever you used your super. In the Taken King, according to the armory, it'll restore your health, melee, and grenade energy. Is that enough to make this viable? I am very doubtful, but it is definitely an improvement. I think the impossible machines are more appealing, nothing manacles, light beyond nemesis for trials. Yeah, I'm still not on the Apotheosis Veil bandwagon. Hunters, you're getting four exotics. I hope you guys like boots because both leg armor pieces are back. Bones of Ao and Radiant Dance Machines. The bones are a huge community favorite, giving you that extra jump, although Radiant Dance Machines didn't catch on as much. I don't really have much room to say if they're good or bad though. They're basically personal preference exotics. If you like them a lot, good, use them. If you don't like them, then you don't use them. Acleophage Symbiote makes its return to give you Gunslingers another golden gun shot. This was quite a popular choice in year two, mainly because everything else for Gunslingers was terrible. While the Celestial Nighthawk is going to net you more damage overall on your golden gun, you have the potential to kill more targets in PvE and generate more orbs. In PvP, it's just another shot, another potential kill. It's solid. Young Ahamkara's Spine is a little bit stronger now though compared to Year 1, so there is a slight choice to make. Finally, the ATS-8 Tarantella Chest Armor is a new Taken King exotic. You take reduced arc damage in PvE, and your arc grenades and arc blade recharge faster. Overall, I think this becomes the Blade Dancer armor to use, not that it really has that much competition. It's a pretty good PvE choice if Blade Dancer is actually used in PvE. The armor itself is very strong, it's just that the current meta isn't the most friendly to Blade Dancers at the moment. Those are the new and old exotics coming in the December patch. We don't know when exactly the patch is coming, but if I were to guess, I'd say it's sometime after PlayStation Experience, which is on the 5th and the 6th. Thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.